Hello and welcome to the PC Perspective Podcast. This is episode number... 599! Thank you. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I'm Sebastian Peak. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm Johnny Shee. You are. <laughs> I'm Brett Van Sprumberg tonight. It's just tonight, though. Uh, we're going to get our housekeeping stuff out of the way. Oh, this is subscribe. Great. Subscribe to our email list to be alerted before live events like this podcast recording session. And you can help support PC Perspective. You can be one of the few, the proud, the PC per patrons at patreon.com slash PC per. Support the arts. Be a patron of the arts. Because this is art. We're it making is. art. Yes. It is art. Oh, hey. And art hurts us more than it hurts you. Is, is there an update on the Patreon front this evening, or am I misreading this? No, you're not misreading it at all. We would like to welcome two additional uh, patron members this week. Uh, Matt Ezzo, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, and uh, just Stefan, or Stephen. I, I'm not. A, I'm never really sure how to pronounce the, that, the, that's the PH. Stephen. That's Stephen. It is? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. a Stephen then. And so, yes, please throw in a couple of... Uh, of... Was the golf clap too sarcastic yeah. last time? Uh, no, I, I felt it was a little bit more than golf clap. I felt it was like, hey, that was a nice show. I didn't feel like it was, that was a nice putt. I think you could go so more golf. So a cricket clap. I, more... I may have layered the sound effect over itself to make it more full. Yeah, so this that was time it. I could just do a, a little yeah, pull it back. golf clap. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a little bit more nice putt. And we need to continue. We have quite a few already, but we need to continue gathering questions for the upcoming return of the mailbag. Josh Mail. Josh explains things 2.0. Yep. But you're, you'll make an effort. Maybe. Yeah. We could always set your answers to a musical sting or maybe some sort of, you know, background music. Oh, maybe. for sure. We can always add peppy background music to everything. I've Josh considered adding questions with Sting in the background. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't use Sting. It has to be a YouTube library equivalent of Sting. If I ever lose my faith in 10 nanometers. Nice. Before we get to the news, we have to start with a burger update because we actually have one this week, Josh, don't we? Yeah, this one was called The Sunshine. And uh, it was quite tasty. It's uh, two all beef patties, uh, locally sourced, uh, never frozen uh, meat, um, cream cheese, which is kind of odd, but it worked. Guacamole, which mixed with cream cheese was shockingly good. Cucumbers, tomatoes topped with a chipotle sauce. It was uh, it was very filling. It's quite good. Thanks for asking. Let's move on to news topics, and I don't think we've really gone all that heavily into the whole NVIDIA capacitor trash to desktop drama with the 3080 yet. I don't but think we've talked about it. Did yeah. you check yours yet, Josh? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. I mean, I good. can talk about a little bit of it. Well, the, you know what we all kind of figured out. Cool. Well, there's, there's all the different theories about the design and the types of caps being used. And there's a lot of people who've become experts all of a sudden on this and offered their own commentary about it. And there've been some really in-depth looks at it, like Gamers Nexus, for example. And then Igor's lab, of course, has been at the forefront of this whole thing. NVIDIA did release updated drivers that changed the boost behavior of the 3080 a little bit. In fact, maybe affecting the boost behavior of the 20 series cards as well. You can read about it over at Igor's lab on the article about the miracle drivers, how NVIDIA solved the crashes of the GeForce RTX 3080 and 3090. I think the long and short of it is, okay, first of all, people are saying those those caps on the back, the big black ones, they're cheap. And that's that's not true. Those are, those are all pretty good polymer-based caps. What makes it a little bit harder with the smaller caps is it's a lot more soldering. And so the placement is harder for the automated machines that actually made these versus just those big old, I can't remember, they're called P caps or something like that. But the, but they're, they're a polymer-based cap. And remember many, many years ago when 
capacitors on motherboards, you know, went from fluid to polymers, and there was a huge increase in uh, stability and longevity and overall quality. I mean, these these caps are still pretty expensive. It's just the the placement uh, versus the ceramic ones that they they have there. But it seems like um, the ability to adjust to significant changes in kind of power i don't want to say throughput but the power it's delivery what it is yeah, yeah you know power delivery is that you know the, the the gpu requires a lot more power really really quickly and in some places this this polymer cap i mean it exhausts itself faster and you may get you know if, if you look at those power and grounds and and how it's all connected i mean it could very simply be you know, it, it it just can't refill itself fast enough using a, a liquid term because fluid dynamics and electronics and pressure and volume and, and stuff like that all actually kind of works as, as comparisons. But um, they're not cheap. And it's if you get one that has six of those, if you install the new drivers... It looks like NVIDIA is adjusting how it handles boost. So, for example, the XC3 that I have here, um, it doesn't really boost that high comparatively. I mean, it can get to 1870, 1920 sometimes, but it doesn't go to that 2 gigahertz plus that other cards did. And it seems like some people are getting some uh, GPUs that are able to boost pretty high. And so those designs with the, you know, the all polymer caps in the back, they just can't potentially keep up with some of those boost states. Now, the GPUs don't stay at those boost states for very long. One or two seconds, if, if that, and then it'll, it'll drop back yeah. down just because of the way that, you know, it handles power draw and heat. And, you know, it's a really, really complex way of, of, kind of managing it all and nvidia is able to get really good performance out of these but it just seems like it it hits some boost clocks that it just it just falls over and it crashes the desktop and they've adjusted that it's seemingly in drivers and i know for my xc3 when i installed the precision x1 there was a new firmware update as well and my overall performance did go down a little bit, but we're talking maybe 1% at max in, in really heavy-duty stuff. But otherwise, I mean, it's essentially the same. And they've been able to adjust the behavior of these boost clocks so that it doesn't hit those really, really, really high spots. But you know, maybe it can hit almost really high spots for longer. And so it really does not affect performance that much. It's really seems like they've, they've optimized it. So you get still pretty much the same performance. I know like Brad Chaco's uh, from PC world did some testing and he saw no difference whatsoever. Um, you know, maybe somebody has some uh, really high boosting GPU that is going to be affected a little bit more Be because of it, you know, it had good power delivery, but you know, the drivers have have kind of busted that down a little bit. But that's that's gonna be a pretty rare case versus nobody noticing anything at all. Is that clear as mud? Did I explain that? Okay. It makes no. sense. No, very yes. well. Okay. I just I want to show <laughs> as we continue, I want to show this visual from Igor's lab. You can watch this as it animates. You can see the it's showing the new drivers right now. Here are the old drivers. New drivers. It's the same axis here. It's still driver. The behavior of the card is more conservative. It's something you can see, especially if you zoom in. And so Igor's lab, I think, has the best coverage on this so far. But if this was something where they could literally tweak the driver, take a 1% to 2% performance hit, and fix the problems that the vast majority is having with their hardware and not have to do some massive, incredibly expensive recall... Or, but the question is, how the hell did they miss it? Well, lack of testing. Of an and uh, to be fair, it's, because it's not NVIDIA. It's the OEMs. 
the, the founders editions don't seem to have this. Correct. I I, but I also sure. part of it is is Nvidia wanted to cut down on the leaks. And the leakiest people on the world are these OEMs. Fair. I mean, they've That's got fair. thousands of people who have contacts throughout the world and they are like, oh yeah, this is you know, X amount of performance and here's some leak stuff and here's some of the benchmarks I did because, hey, you're a buddy of mine. We go out and drink every once in a while. And, and NVIDIA really clamped down on clamped down on uh, on the partners this time. And so, I mean, we didn't see nearly the leaks. It was a week before we saw anything concrete mm -hmm. uh, before the launch. And even then, it was only a couple little things. So, I mean, NVIDIA did a pretty good job. But the bad side is they the, the partners did not have the hardware and the drivers and everything to test until much later in development than what we'd usually see, I think. That's right, right. I mean, as this is not confirmed, but this is what kind of people have been talking about and what, you know, we've... we've it seems feasible. But yeah, it's, uh, you know, they, they wanted to make a big splash, and they did. And there was a secondary splash because of just the way it was handled. And so, I mean, they're, they're doing... Uh, they're doing damage control. Yep. But I mean, the long and short of it is that you're not really going to lose that much performance. I mean, they're going to tweak that that TDP curve and then power draw, and you're still going to get pretty good boosts, just that you're not going to have those really, really peaky ones um, that potentially could could drain that. And I mean, the uh, the OEMs also, you know, the board manufacturers, they're, they're changing things up. I think Gigabyte had the full uh, six big caps yep. versus the five plus 10 or the four plus twenties. Um, Asus tough had four plus 20. Uh, my EVGA is five plus 10. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's, it's five of the big P caps and 10 of these small ceramic caps and in, in the yep. back that's doing the main power delivery to the, uh, to the GPU. So uh, there's, you know, it's, 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 it's not like you're seeing a massive drop in performance. Um, most people will not notice it at all unless they really get in there with oscilloscopes and, you know, a lot of hours of testing. Um, so it's, 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 uh, it's a quality control issue. Now, I hope I'm not sounding like an NVIDIA apologist because <laughs> this is something that should have been caught but again, they didn't have the you know the partners didn't have the time. I mean, they 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 took the reference designs, tweaked them where they could, adjusted the price point. You know, you know, like Zotac is probably the closest to the reference with the least expensive components, and and that was the 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 group that probably had the most complaints about it, about the crash to desktops and and. Uh, Gigabyte is is kind of next in line, and everybody else is is kind of above that. Uh, but you can bet that that these groups will be adjusting their designs in the future. But the thirty eighty is still a really fast card. <laughs> yeah, let me ask you this: Do you think that the crash to desktop or any of the other instabilities is something that we've seen in the past when you push a card too hard? with manual overclocks, maybe a little bit more voltage, run it a little hotter, you're going to get this sort of behavior. And yeah. I'm seeing some of the reviews finding out, gosh, there's not a lot of headroom left in these cards. What's the and, crazy you know, thought here? Oh, there's not. Been right, Nvidia exactly. Pushed that. So hard. let's put, put two and two together on this. And you're like, they push these cards right up to the edge. Pretty darn close. Yeah, and, and that has been since probably... You know, the 600 series from, from NVIDIA, you know, we, we saw, I remember, you know, Tap came on to PC Pro with Ryan, and he really talked about how the internal controls, how it was able to boost up and and how you could, you know, do the power delivery, the, the uh, power target up to increase clocks, and it would have, you know, a better boost behavior. But if it hit, you know, certain TDPs and power draw, it would drop it back down. And I mean, they, I mean, they're, they just live on the ragged edge and they do per chip. I mean, they, they have these massive chips, 26 billion transistors. They've got sensors throughout. They, they, that, that, that monitor temperature and power draw 
and they they I don't mean there's other sensors that that monitor you know probably the signal quality in in between areas I mean they they, they just have a ton of stuff in there but let's talk about high anyway. frequency capacitor filtering <laughs> Can we talk about something simple for a second that yeah, I can un yeah, understand? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Why why is Nvidia selling a card that's this close to its limit as far as what this GPU can do? To Just the point where case. AIBs well what my because point they, is why because is it they can and there's a certain amount of control that they have over it if the software and firmware are in sync. Okay. Because but, they can I mean they 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 say, okay, you're here's your base clock, 1710 on on this gpu <clears throat> and that's what you're guaranteed to have anything above that is gravy and so all of these boost at least to you know 1800 1820 and then you've got others that will go up to 1900 and then you've got still others that are really high quality gpus whether they're from the you know middle of the the wafer or whatever i mean they'll they'll jump up to two gigahertz but I mean, they're they're covering their ass by saying the minimum you're going to get is seventeen ten, and and your performance is still going to be very good. Anything mm -hmm. above that, we can't guarantee. But you're going to get seventeen ten. My point is, the founder's edition should be a higher performance card than a base card. Yet they set the price at six ninety nine for all thirty eighties. The if the founder's edition had launched at seven ninety nine, you're paying this extra premium. Not only for this ultra fancy industrial design, this new cooler design, because there used to be a premium attached to Founders Edition, and there yeah. isn't now. But that's so because if, they used to do a base card. Now the right. Founders Edition it's is not, the base card. My, nah, my point it's is, not really if, a base card. If, but if, yeah. if AIBs from the manufacturer, yeah. If FD AIBs is. had a, a reference design that was clocked a little bit lower, like maybe sixteen eighty, maybe just a little bit lower than that, and then they could build up and you know, kind of bin and select what they wanted to make their slight overclock cards. One that was like an, an FE equivalent, one that was a little bit higher than an FE. I don't understand this generation of cards being this close to the edge, like a Radeon card. Like it's, there's not a whole lot of overclocking headroom with AMD's RDNA stuff. I mean, and, there was no overclocking headroom with the RTX 2000 series. Yeah, very little. They could get yeah. up to like 2040, I think. But not consistently, no. Yeah. I mean, you could lock in a, a lower frequency than that, but there was a little bit of headroom depending on the card. It wouldn't have changed the situation that we're in now. If, even if the card was seven ninety nine, it would still be out of stock, and it still would have been. I mean, because you can't buy one at any price, so who cares what the, the <clears throat> price actually is? Well, yeah, I mean, Newegg was teasing us today. I think that they were doing some serious testing with their website and bots by having add to cart uh on on their main you know 3080 3090 page with only a pair of of cards the uh asus tough and the gigabyte one mm -hmm. and i tried you know adding it and of course the first thing it says is this has been removed from your cart but you can go ahead and try to check out anyway and so it seems like nvidia not nvidia but newegg at least is uh testing out how bots are reacting to its website and hopefully that means there will be some changes in the next mm -hmm. um, group of cards being dropped i mean i don't have a whole lot of faith but at least it seems like they're trying to do something to mitigate the pr disaster okay. that's been the 3080 3090 launch but no that just sounds like you know i trade half my bots to say yes and have to say no and start from scratch again and bifurcate from there because you can do a lot of iterations really quickly but at least it's well, something i don't understand why nvidia didn't have like if you signed up for the geforce experience and we've got your information and data and you want one of these cards put in a request for it we'll have a lottery that would that would seem like it i mean does that seem fair do you think that would be against the law doesn't cost you to join into the lottery then yeah all right nope <laughs> yeah no, I mean, it's free. GeForce Experience is free. I mean, that's how we did the Olympics up here. Uh, so we're moving on. We're moving on to the next topic. AMD. Talk about AMD. Hey, wait, before you do that, I just well. want to say that we did. We have a new Patreon that joined while we were chatting here. And uh, 
before we lose track of what this was about, they have set their name to be five ninety nine is all I will have left with all the new hardware coming out this season. <laughs> like five dollars ninety nine cents. Five point. Is, is that what they pledged by any chance? Is the five ninety nine? I, I won't reveal anyone's pledge. Fair. Okay. Fair. Thank you. I, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, did you know that the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X is going to be faster than a 10900K? Good for Tell AMD us. if that's the case. Define faster. Uh, Ashes of the Singularity Benchmark, the only benchmark ah, that matters. The only one that matters. The only one that Except- matters. But Sebastian, Arguably, it's only eight cores and sixteen threads. Yeah, how how, right. how can they? How can it be? Because of Zen three technology, Brett. Oh. Okay. Because Zen three is better than Zen two. Two, it's, it's, it's one more. And Zen magic. two is pretty good. It is pretty good. It is. Let's look at this little chart that they came up with. Zen three has more pixels. Ten nine hundred K to Ryzen seven fifty eight hundred X leaked ashes of the singularity benchmark. If you go to just the average Core i9 10900K averaged 114.8 frames per second, and the 5800K averaged 133.6. That is a increase of 16.4 percent. Now that's Ashes, that's pretty big. Ashes is very multi-thread optimized, very AMD friendly benchmark. It's kind of it, had, it was the go-to benchmark for AMD fans, I think, for a while. I don't remember why I got annoyed with it, but I stopped using it. It was inconsistent from run to run or something, but it was. I, I could always got a, a real fan it. of the game here in the Discord. Somebody who's played a thousand hours of it. I'm not sure. Oh, really? So, yeah. Like actually played it, not just run benchmarks. I've, I've only ever run the Canada benchmark in that game. Ash is the benchmark. Uh, yeah. Well, it, maybe maybe it's a rumor. He'll come out of the woodwork. You know, soon. the the other rumor that I saw about this is that they're doing. Uh, kind of reverse multi-threading. And I find this unlikely because of just oh, the way... you did hear this too? Yeah. I just, I you know, that, that whole hell. multi-thread fusion into one single powerful thread. I mean, that's 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 been kind of the holy grail of programming and silicon is that, you know, you have all parallel computing. But, I mean, if you think about how a single thread is 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 executed and that it i mean you can't break it up into parts very easily i mean they've they've been talking about this for decades it's like fusion for computers it's always 20 years away so i don't know i don't know i i don't i think that is highly unlikely we would probably have heard something from hot chips about an effective way to do this, and they're kind of showing off that technology. But that that stuff would they leak. never did. That that yeah, would leak. So I, yeah, you would think. Uh, so uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see that. Where I just did see that AMD really improved their IPC, and I don't know if this benchmark is accurate. I I don't think it's entirely accurate. I think Zen three is going to be an IPC jump where. It's going to match Intel, if not get a little bit farther uh, away from them. But I don't, I don't know if it's going to be a massive sixteen to seventeen percent. I, I mean, so. it's going to improve I IPC, so. and they're going to improve clocks. Yeah, but not that much. Hey, Josh, somebody wants to know if they can get a refund on their Oracle licensing uh, under reverse multi-threading. <laughs> I was just about to tell oh, them man. that no, you won't, but they will sue you 10 years from now for it. I think they're going to find a way to VMware, charge you more for ESXi, it. yes. <laughs> Hello, ESXi. I've got uh, far fewer threads on this uh, yeah. VM. I'd like to get a refund. Yeah, the answer is a polite no. It's not a polite no, okay, it's, I mean, but it is I a made no. The, made the polite yeah. part up. So usually I'm a little more edgy. I apologize. I'm sorry. Hey, sp- speaking of edgy, think about this. A Gen 4 PCIe SSD, so PCI Express 4.0 and VME SSD, with blazing fast QLC memory. Think about it. The Rocket the, Q4 from Sabrent, it's new. That actually kind of is. 
Let's see. What is what, the weird what? part about it? Well, you mean it was fast? What in the heck yeah. is going to use ULC for PCIe 4. You're going to have so many. You're going to require so many channels. <laughs> right? And it's easy and to get the same size on controller. Yeah. Uh, they did slap a, a, a nice size uh, chunk of DRAM on it to help. But what blew me away with this uh, when they're doing like the real world transfers and such. Uh, oh, well, I mean, the, the timing is brilliant, but it's more that it doesn't fill up and slow down to a hard drive. It really? ain't the fastest out there. Like, there's no question it's not, it, it's not the fastest. But, I mean, when, when it's sort of averaging close to, to 5,000 megabytes a second, like, that's just freaking crazy. And they've got at least a little bit of a, a confidence in it because it's got a five-year warranty on it. Hmm. Because uh, you, a lot of these you see, there's a, a limited warranty, or there might be like a three year warranty on it. Uh, but in a lot of these tests, it, it's keeping up with significantly more, uh, like better built drives. Uh, partly because you know Sabrent's been doing this for freaking ever, and so they know what they're doing. But uh, the other issue is, and I didn't actually link to the Amazon for some reason, which I really should have. Is like that they're pumping it out in one, two, and four terabyte sizes. So they're they're acknowledging that yeah, this is kind of cheap RAM, or sorry, cheap flash, and this is the way we're going to do it. But like uh, a four, I'm assuming they haven't redirected me. The four terabyte is seven hundred fifty bucks. That's not, not exactly cheap. Exactly cheap, but for a four terabyte, it's not too damn bad. Like that, that is a huge amount of storage. I, you, you drop it down a little bit to the more reasonable one terabyte, and it's 160 bucks For QLC, a little bit expensive, but PCIe 4.0. So you're, you're still paying Fizon for the fact that that's the only damn controller you got on the planet, and there's a little bit of uh, RAM on there. So it's it was better than I expected. Because I saw this and I'm like, Sabrent, what the hell do you think you're thinking of? And it turned out that, yeah, you know, for a QLC drive, it almost makes sense. They've been pretty aggressive with their uh, productization in uh, in not only just the old PCIe 3.0 and VME, but but I mean, they were they had some of the first offerings and typically. Good performance, but cheaper than the rest, whether that be Corsair, the Gigabyte Aorus, uh, a couple of other, you know, examples of the PCI 4.0 using that same Fizon E16. Um, yeah, Sabrent's uh, done a nice job, and you don't hear a lot of bad stuff about terms of quality. It, no. it just seems to work. It was interesting to look at the lower Q depth numbers, too, uh, which is... You know, they have an advantage with a higher capacity for writes, obviously, but if you look at... Uh, I think this one was a two terabyte drive. Yeah. Those are the four, yeah. But, you know, Q-Depth 1, well, this is Q-Depth 8 I'm looking at here. Let's see, where's the Q1 stuff? Here's random uh, or sequential read. This is Q-Depth 1. No, it's not. It's one one meg Q8. Okay. So yeah. I'm looking at higher Q-Depth stuff. I wonder if they did any Q-Depth 1 here, which you can, of course, see in some of the charts, depending on which uh, benchmark we're looking at. But, you know, things like the Optane are just going yeah. to be absolutely... Hey, if you, you know, bought the Optane, you have to include it in every comparative review. Yeah. <laughs> but what's the, uh, what, the Micron P1 and the Intel 660P? Those things are yeah. kind of dog slow. Yeah. So this but avoids it. Yeah. But you got to pay. And paying for QLC does kind of hurt a little. Yeah. QLC is the new TLC, unfortunately. Yep. And I think we're going to start seeing more and more QLC Gen 4 drives because they can advertise that fast straight line speed. Mm -hmm. As long as they mm -hmm. have a sufficient either SLC cache or enough DRAM. What was the amount of DRAM? I'm sure it varies They're by capacity. being a pretty closed lip on that, to be mm. honest. I think it's I like a, a max of four gigs for. I, honestly, I mean, I they so. they typically have done a one gig per terabyte. I think. Hmm. Yeah, but the, and I expect that because they're being closed lipped on it, that 
that's going to be about the same, but it, it's actually getting frustrating because uh, you'll find out the controller of the SSD and you'll find out the flash type and then they won't tell you anything else about it. Hey, or I'm not picking up DRAM -less. Rate, rate white papers. Can you imagine a DRAM-less QL? Well, I mean, we have DRAM-less Yeah, we've seen drives. them. They're cheap as chips and they're barely worth it. They're slightly faster than a hard drive most of the time. Yes. <laughs> no, I, ch I challenge that assessment. <laughs> they're often faster than a hard drive, except for except extended when they're writes. Not. Exactly. I can write to my USB 3 connected external, like Easy Store 10 terabyte drive at a consistent 177 ish megabytes per second for hours. Which I actually did because I backed up a NAS to a 10 terabyte drive that way. That's that's spinning rust, right? Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, it's 170 plus megabytes per second consistently. You can back yeah, that's, one that's of those good. SSDs into a corner if it's QLC with no DRAM. Come to find out, those WD Reds are actually 7200 RPM drives, by the way. Uh, yeah. Many of them. We ever talk about that? I don't think no. we talked about that. Yeah. No. Cool. Cool story, bro. Though. Yeah, if you actually do a little bit of scientific <laughs> research into your drive, you find out it's just no they just Stop make it. one drive. All right. <laughs> they do. They just make one drive. It's like the Intel thing. It's like wait, they make one CPU. Wait, before you move on. What? Uh, what? Uh, what? Another Patreon member uh, upped their pledge because it's you're so entertaining. It's actually, it's Josh's soothing voice. Someone just said that. So. They've changed yeah. their name to, I'm not, I have no idea what this means, Louis... <laughs> Ladork <laughs> deserves it in the best area. I don't know what that means. <laughs> you do know what it means. <laughs> I'm going to pretend I say, don't know what it means. <laughs> doing it in the best area, you know. I could I the could change best. the emphasis. Yeah. Louis Ladork deserves it in the best. I don't area. know. You could, area. you could read that with a bit more of a uh, malevolence to your voice and it might have a different meaning entirely I'll, I can try Louis Lador deserved it in the best area mm, that sounded more menacing than yeah, it was, was not malevolent <sighs> I'm sorry Brad I'm going to have to have you read that again this time a little bit more malevolent <laughs> Look, I'm going to need another take he deserved it I'm going to have to there is no the ad page. this week but there is this there is yeah there's, this. please it's vote us to which you prefer you know what I'm going to read this four times and you're going to cut it in oh <laughs> hey, is there an Xbox thing we need to talk about? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, ours, ours, <laughs> Technica. Josh's head is coming apart. Got us. Yeah, apparently they're a stayed in their car. Early one. Look at this. They get one two months early. They don't get to play any of the new games, of course, but they can play old games on it. And even worse, they were given a thousand old games they could play, and they didn't even come close to doing that. That's sad. the hell kind of journalism is this? Let's see. How well, big is it? They were missing a few of the headliners, uh, from what I hear. Yeah, but you know, uninstalling all those games is a pain in the butt to install new ones. So, True. Uh, might be time it, to get a new IKEA shelf here. Eh. This is an abomination. They they did discover that fast uh, switching between games is actually w works. Yeah, fairly up well. to eight games. Yep, I thought it was which 12. is impressive. I thought it was 12. Was uh, it he said effectively eight. Okay. okay. Uh, up to 12 Maybe the... will be faster, but if you've got a core of eight, mm. stupidly fast. And like mm. eight seconds switch, right? Under, yeah. Well, under 10 seconds anyway. Solid yeah. under 10 seconds. They're doing so much with IO in terms of software. It's awesome. And NVMe has allowed us to do these things because there's so much bandwidth and there's so many things you can optimize in there. And and this is, you know, it's it's a real value added feature, and no, it's one right. that's going to make its way to Windows 10 already with, you know, the help of Nvidia. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's going to be, yeah, I/O is is an area that has always seemingly lagged until recently uh, with everything else. I mean, think about how fast memory was, and then you've got a hard drive that. Just pushing out 14 megabytes per second way back in the day, and your memory is is 400 megabytes per second, and now it's now it's getting up there where we're you know PCIe 4.0 drive speeds. You can do a lot of interesting things, especially with SSD controllers, and you're not you're not you don't have you know four magnetic head readers. 
skipping across to spinning <laughs> rust. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, and, and filling it Life with helium and uh, ASMR and other tricks to get oh, it to man. work yeah. better. Hey, no, I'm direct, almost curious. Direct so, so ASMR with uh, with hard drives is when the the heads whisper really, really softly yes. to the spinning discs. <laughs> I'm gonna find something at and they whisper this address shingle. and oh, how do you see how that swing arm swings so fast? Shingle. Yeah. Let's not go there. I was taken to a, a place there, and I'm not sure I, I like it. I found this interesting. He said, I'm in a surprising that twist. That you might have liked it. That's that's the scary part. Uh, whether the, the, According to the Earth author at Arsenka, which I should actually look up his name, whether the game in question was installed on the console's built-in NVMe storage or an external USB 3.1 drive, jumping from one game to the next was clocking at 8 to 13 seconds. Yep. Even when pulling Red Dead Redemption 2 or Borderlands 3 off of a USB 3.1 drive. I'm, I'm assuming a, a well, USB... Well, Red Dead took a little bit longer. It was oh, okay. it was an outsider. Okay. And, I mean, honestly, it is on anything. I really need to play Red Dead Redemption 2. I've gotten about 15 minutes into it, but... It's, it's a lot it's of a, hunting simulator, but it's kind lovely. of relaxing. It is. And it's, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Even on my 1080. I can't wait. Until one year when? Maybe in January. January, yeah. there will be stocks of 3080s. Well, or big yeah, Navi. Just, just in time for Valentine's Day. I'm, I'm shooting for February. TIs. I hear the, uh, the in-game uh, scenery looks a lot like where you live, actually. And a lot of horse riding. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> I hear a mysterious Except when you go into the door. bayou. Not so much. Yeah, I, no, I apologize. Uh, you can edit out the creaking door later. I cannot. It's amazing how quickly you go from freezing cold mountain to really hot bayou, and there's no way to tell which friggin' outfit is which, so you just keep switching until he's not hot or you're cold anymore. It annoys me. Hmm. I you know what annoys me? You know, what, you know what annoys me? Ajisa oh. updates. Oh, Ajisa oh you does. love Ajisa. So, I mean, it's great for people who want better performance from their PCs and better RAM compatibility yeah, and losers. better boost behavior and all that crap. Hey, how about when you're at the tail end of a three-day testing binge? Do you like it right. just updates then? I don't like it ever <laughs> because I feel like it invalidates everything I've done. Because if if performance changes, whether it's for the good or to the detriment of the product, then future comparisons are slightly skewed. Which Sometimes you're talking about very slight variations in in frames per second in a gaming benchmark, for example, then it can be, it, it has been problematic in the past. Maybe this one is just a minor change. We're talking about combo PI uh, 1.1.0.0. 1. 1. 1. 1. Yes. Correct? Because, yes, because they got off of the 1004 A, ABA, ABBA stuff. And they moved up to version two. So this is actually V2 and then 1.0 something. And now we're up to 1.100. But MSI, this is on their blog. They're typically the first to jump on the new updates. And you can get the beta BIOS. I think you can already download this stuff. There are download links to yep. yeah all these boards, including boards that I have, like the one that AMD Ooh. sent with the original reviewers kit mm. was the godlike like so i could update the godlike and we have i don't know if i have an msi b550 i don't think so i think i just have asrock and asus hmm. but they will follow usually asus is, is a little bit slower to adopt the new agisa code than msi is yeah, Asrock's pretty quick, and sometimes Gigabyte can be fast. Yes. Mm, that's what but I'm they're complaining about. Behind. Yeah. I like this bird's no, eye view awesome. of the update that they're it's showing It's great, here. dude. Uh, you know, it, again, it's it's more value for <laughs> us. <laughs> Did you see the bomb? Soren, you're brilliant. <laughs> Uh-oh. That's freaking awesome. Do Do I dare? Oh yeah. God! Yes. Apologies to the oh, yeah. audio listeners, but you're missing out. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, you need to explain the plight of the plight of the copper tubing. <laughs> no, I, I have a fear of what this might be. I may have taken oh. a picture of myself 
Yeah. The other night. Oh no, that's fine. No, this is good. This is it's innocuous. This is fine. At the it's innocuous. It's, oh. it's 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 going to move on from that. But yeah, you should definitely throw it up on screen, anyways. So, oh, yeah. it is. It is right now. Yeah, there's a lovely copper pipe just inches off screen over here that the city plumber came in and threw. It. It's the most ridiculous thing because. I have this shelving back here, and I had shelving on that wall, and he just piped up and around it, and it comes way out into the room, and it looks absolutely ridiculous. Ah, I will, I will fix it someday. <laughs> One day. Yes. It's uh, going to be your pick of the week again. <laughs> no. When I do it, it will be. In fact, I'll just, I'll document all of it. I'll have a special live stream. Oh yeah. I'm here still I am, telling you, you shutting off my water and do a water cooling loop. I yep. should. And I'm going to take this copper too. When I take it all out and put in pecs or whatever I do, maybe I'll just sweat a different. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Is the problem? Who added all these games? Space games. Quick updates. Is this Jeremy? I no. think it was a consortium of more than one okay. person. Well, I added one. Okay. I, I see rock I, paper shotgun. That's got to be Jeremy. I no. Oh no! I added that one. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Guide me through this. This uh, is an elite dangerous update that now includes a previous pay-for-play Horizons uh, DLC that they're now including for zero dollars. Um, come to find out, the rumor was the uptake on Horizons was not a significant percentage of actual elite dangerous um, owners, but the next update, which I believe is called uh, Odyssey, requires Horizons. So I think it's in their best interest to throw it in uh, in order to um, widen the uh, base of users who can actually upgrade to Odyssey. And um, throwing it in for $0 is, uh, you know, I, I don't remember what it cost. I think I originally upgraded uh, to Horizons when they when they brought it out. I think it was like 20 bucks, Something like that, yeah. Yeah, when I was playing it. <clears throat> Some time ago. But hey, you get a special hat if you already own it. True. Or, sorry, so I'll look out for my special hat, perhaps. But anyway, uh, it's actually a reasonable deal. Uh, Horizons is actually cool. And what Horizons' primary um, add to Elite Dangerous was is that you got to drive uh, space buggies. You got to land on the planets and uh, drive them around and interact with uh, things that were on the surface of the planet and do things like that. The next uh, upgrade, Odyssey, actually allows you to put feet down. Um, individual users uh, roaming uh, pretty much every planetary body. So going to be actually fairly interesting. If you like the exploration, combat, trading, game, that sort of thing, that sort of thing you like, you'll does like it. Tell me, does Steam tell me when I bought it? No, oh, i got to go back and look. I think we missed a couple. Because I literally of... have not fired it up because <sighs> it just keeps annoying me in the press and uh -oh. yeah. various other ways. I really should. But they got your money once. They don't. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's in your library somewhere. It's in your library. And that's really more important than actually playing the game. Is it in your library? And then you can kind of strut around with that knowledge of, yeah, at least hey, I own it's, it. it's still even in my favorites. I just... Uh, I added the next one, too, which was... Uh, oh, wow. October, October 2nd is the release of Star Wars Squadrons. Um, but I just yeah. want to warn everybody, EA is selling it pre-release. Yeah, yeah, don't. Don't yet. Don't. They, it's, don't, well, no, you never buy anything pre-released from EA, right? I mean, that should that should be written in stone. Don't don't buy any pre-release EA but games. But why? Don't no. pre-order games, children. Well, okay, in general, probably don't do that. But especially don't do that for any EA game. Even if they're giving away special paint jobs, resist the urge. Um, they've said and sworn up and down, cross their heart and hope to die, no loot boxes. <laughs> no no, nope. so you and your your disbelief. Star crates. No, no, they've said no loot boxes, no crate, no in-game currency other than uh, an experience-related currency. That as you gain experience and win, uh, that you can trade that for cosmetics only. Cosmetics but, only. So an invisible. But what if you're a bard? Hmm? Okay. And you want a loot box. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to play a different game. Ah. Uh. I'm sorry. You, this is not the game for you. One, did you? I oh, did. I, I did, unfortunately. Okay. Sorry, I missed it. Loot? L-U-T-E? Oh. That's it, your oh. bird. Oh. Oh, you too. Oh. Oh. You know what? You know yes. what? Ah, that's yes. exactly. 
puts all the points in charisma and none in intelligence, I think is where yep. we're going with that. Like, you know what? Can I roll a new character? Can I? Trolley case. Can I, I just want uh, a new character because uh, the one I'm playing that, right now that, that's, is, that's, is that's, not going to be frowned upon. So. I am so just stick with what you got and work with it. You, yes. you, can, you can find much success. There are people out there to help. No, I think yeah. I can Maybe do not better. right here at this moment, but there are people to help. All right. I'll think about it, but there's really, I think I'm played out. Uh, I didn't add the last one. I think that's probably that Jeremy guy. Yeah, no, I did. And, you know, speaking of buying games before they exist, but Kickstarter will still do because honestly, I, I'm batting about 800 on Kickstarter. A couple of them screwed oh, really? me, but for the vast majority, it's been pretty good. I pick and choose. Uh, so this is actually a, a fairly well known uh, developer. But so the, they did uh, The Long War which uh, turned the remake of XCOM into an interesting game. Oh. Uh, I don't know if you play, if anyone's played The Long War, but it's great. It, it actually turns it into what feels like a struggle like the original did. So this one, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, well, you know, I'm, I'm still waiting on... Uh, what the... Uh, Xenonauts 2, which is going to be great eventually when it comes out, because Xenonauts 1 was really really good for the original XCOM. this one i sort of looked at it and i'm like okay you know and then they switch to and the battle isn't going to be one on earth and they start scrolling out and now it's a realistic model of our solar system with planets and moons and a lot of the bases that you're building aren't on earth they're on a moon or a, another planet and you're trying to mine resources there and to build spaceships to go out and fight the aliens still with the intricacy of uh, the actual XCOM base building. So all of a sudden it went from, okay, we've got another XCOM one to, well, nobody's done that before. And the maps actually look really pretty on, on one of the intro videos. It, it really does look like you uh, skip ahead a little bit and they might uh, show you once once they get out into the universe and of course you know ship to ship combat with you know a newtonian physics which is rare to find these days so we'll see uh it's already blown through by a significant amount they wanted 20k they're they're pushing 60 so i could be leading you wrong i hope i'm not it should be very interesting to see because I, I trust these guys from the long war from uh, the XCOM remake, I, I have a I have a confession to make. I I had this in there and I removed it. Not that it's not good, but I'm like I don't want to push it. <laughs> <laughs> You're just jumping on the Jeremy bandwagon now, Brett, which is okay. I'm calling favor with the the Jeremy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, trying to steal his thunder sure is exactly how, how I would. Follow. You chose poorly. You yeah. chose poorly. Hey, talk about you're... talk about no emoting. All right, sorry. Well, that was his character in that one. Um, Jeremy He's been waiting a thousand years for a pizza. A thousand yes, years. Jeremy, you have a sneak peek at something you're working on. I yeah, understand. the data share. It's an that? English company, so by putting a, a really, you know, that sort of an accent on it is is kind of. Uh, funny at least to me <laughs> so what they, like a southern accent southern american accent we yeah. the data yeah. sure bt does bt you know, does that mean bluetooth is that what that means it does indeed okay it is a wee little usb drive shiny as all hell Ultra it's secure, secure but the the thing with this one is that and and these guys do enterprise security level this is a yes uh x x ps 256 uh whatever the hell they're calling this particular one now. Uh, but it, it's the advanced AE-256. It has a Bluetooth on it because it's powered by your cell phone. So as long as your cell phone is within the, the area of the Bluetooth connection, it pings you for the passcode on the cell phone. So you can plug this into a computer and try and brute force it, and you're never even going to get a prompt. It's also got two-factor authentication, so the first thing it does is send you a text, and if you don't reply to the text, it never even moves on to the password. 
So it, it's an interesting thing that literally the second you lose the damn thing, which has always been my concern with with enterprise uh, secure drives, is that second you lose it, you're pretty much screwed. Someone's going to get into it. With this, you've lost it. Well, they need the phone to try and do it. They can try and replicate the phone. They got 10 strikes before it completely wipes itself to the point where you have to reformat it before it's even readable. Uh, as far as my PC is concerned, it's not readable. It doesn't even exist being plugged in until I unlock it uh, via either the two-factor authentication or just the, the password. So I'm interested. Uh, I've pretty much done most of my stuff with it, so I'm going to try and write it up. There is a bit of a spoiler on this. Uh, it's 150 bucks <laughs> for the the uh, 64 gig version uh, because it's British. You're also paying a significant amount of shipping to get it over here, mate. Uh, if you were over there, I'd be about 100 pound, which still is significantly expensive. So. I don't know if this is a great thing to buy for your own personal use, but if you've got people that work with you that, you know, consider the whole uh, never plug in a USB drive, let alone put anything important on it, they consider that just a, a, an annoying suggestion, might almost be worth looking at uh, because it is enterprise grade. And for the ones that can never remember a password, yes, it does the fingerprint and the face recognition coming soon more more information about this drive from Jeremy but I've, I've used some of their their key lock ones uh for secure shipping hard drives and ssds around and they're pretty damn good let's move on to our last segment known as picks of the week and i don't see anything uh for josh here is that the case uh you know what why don't i just uh tell you about it okay it's the uh it's the free japan update for microsoft flight simulator Ooh, okay. That is does, that the one uh, with the perfectly of... normal chasm in it, or was that the other one? That was that was that's that's I don't know where that one is that turns into interstellar when you fly through it. Yeah, um, I, I just saw that yeah. today, and it was impressive. Yeah, no, this is this is uh, they they um, they've gone through certain areas in Japan and put you know actual landmarks and a lot more accurate uh, building and. Uh, you know, bridges, stuff like that. Uh, you can actually get in there, fly a Beechcraft King Air, and it's like two and a half hours of flying. And they will take you through a bunch of the different places that you should kind of see. Uh, just that they've, you know, done airports, they've done cities, they've done landmarks uh you know mountains mount fuji in there is is a lot more accurate now apparently so yeah it's it's a free update on your microsoft uh flight sim 2020 so grab it it's good i flew around japan last night quite a bit only crashed once into a mountain going too fast okay, thank you for uh specifying what you crashed into yeah Just a little worried there for a moment uh, yeah the it does pretty, gameplay is incredible looking yeah, it's good stuff, Maynard. And uh, it's still it still chomps down on a thirty eighty. You you get some some lower frame rates in in the, you know at higher quality settings uh, in some of these areas. So are you talking sub thirty? Mm, yeah, it dips into twenty sometimes. Oh wow! Wow! wow. Yeah, it's it's a twenty twenty is a beast. Have you bought a fair four terabyte drive just for the game, though? <laughs> no, but I, I split it off between my NVMe boot drive and my game drive. So there's okay, there's so it's a reading from two different sources. NVMe. What's that? It's reading from two different sources. Huh. Yeah. So trying to get it faster. Jo Jeremy, can you tell me what Waba Jack is? This is apparently your pick. I have no idea. You don't know what it is. Perfect. Yes. Uh, no, this was someone that was tweeting me earlier today. So, I mean, anyone who's still got uh, the bingo cards going on, here's Jeremy going on about mods. Uh, I <laughs> okay. have been usually using uh, either ModDB or Nexus to grab the various mods that I do for things. And they came out with Vortex, which is a, a decent mod manager. 
So uh, I was introduced to Wabajack, which is a, a different one, which is apparently done by the same guy that did uh, Vortex. And it looks pretty. Like it, It's sort of a, a mod manager, but more of a mod source. So it's 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 definitely worth looking at. I mean, Button Pusher is like me, and he just doesn't like playing vanilla games if he doesn't have to. Uh, so... You know, it's it's worth looking, and some of the ones they've got there are just friggin' gorgeous. And, and they're mods on mods. Like, somebody redid Enderiel. Enderiel is a total conversion mod for Skyrim, which is very Euro- Eastern European in flavor, and nobody wins, but you enjoy it along the way. Uh, if you haven't played it, it's, it's worth it. So he, he re- sort of redid that one, another one. Uh, it's a, a lot of Skyrim and Fallout 4. Someone's united... Uh, Fallout New Vegas and the Fallout 4 map into a single giant mega map. Oh, cool. So, yeah, uh, it's it's probably going to, yeah, the, my my career, I believe, is what it was called. So there's a few in there that look interesting, and I'm probably going to have to try it out because I've got all the time in the world to play with things. Uh, the one that really caught my eye, and it's just literally from one screenshot is Kazel K-E-I-Z-A-A-L it's a Z but I mean you guys so it's it's just a single screenshot of one of those dragonborn murals and it's gorgeous the the lighting on it is enough to make me think that you know this one when I finally fire up Skyrim Special Edition might be one of the ones that I try as opposed to trying to stack 200 mods upon each other isn't that gorgeous um it's very dark detailing yeah oh i see very detaily i mean is it fully path traced though well of course not somebody really wants to complain about something and i don't want to prevent them from doing it yeah yeah so that was me um, several weeks ago, I actually um, advertised a pick of the week for a deal on these Toshiba X300 12 terabyte hard drives. And I bought a few. Um, and by a few, I mean more than one and less than five. Um, <laughs> and what's that mean? Seven. A, a number that's uh, a, a not insignificant investment. I got them for way less maybe, than that. Maybe three to four. So after spending many hundreds of dollars on 12 terabyte hard drives and uh, putting them in a raid build uh, along with a few shucked um, 10 terabyte Western digitals <laughs> and then starting to transition. I've got about uh, probably 13, 14 terabytes of stuff on an existing raid you know, system today. So after trying, you know, getting all that stuff moved in, I happen to notice that my, my Toshibas were starting to error out with, they weren't, stop they didn't stop writing they just were stacking up errors and when i finally got in there to investigate the uh the smart attributes uh sebastian i sent you a note in discord oh, yes. if you want to throw that up there and again it wasn't one of them it was all three of them and these were wow. these were two 20 uh two drives that checked out as uh, built near the end of 2018 and one built near the beginning of 2019 so not too far apart from a serial number perspective, you know, within a few months of each other. But if you can zoom in on that, you can see that the <clears throat> the smart error was seek error rate, which unrolls to a mm. mechanical condition of where yeah. the, the heads are having to consistently rehome themselves in order to find the right area on the platters. They're they're mm. off as to where they think that they're supposed to be. They double check as they're. They have a feedback loop, of course. Hey, am I where I think I'm supposed to be? Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, be Are assess. there any firmware updates for these? I updated them. Exa- there Ooh. were, and I updated them all before putting them into service. Good call. Ooh. And I, I flashed them all before uh, actually putting them into service. Uh, so I called brutal. them up. Yeah, it was freaking brutal. Uh, that's you know, 30, uh, yeah. 36 terabytes, all three disks. Uh, very unpleasant. <sighs> it's uh, Kyocera. Or Kaxia, sorry, uh, yeah. Kaxia uh, now uh, with Toshiba, they were fairly painless to deal with from an RMA perspective. I just packed them up and mailed them all out yesterday. But the fact of the matter is, don't buy these. 
this is yeah. <laughs> right now. This is an unpick <laughs> of the week. Uh, I would recommend their perhaps N series if you're liking the Toshibas. Um, the guy that I spoke with literally live on the phone said, yeah, the N series ones are made a little bit better. Uh, these X series ones, we're not even going to RMA them. Basically, we're going to issue you uh, a prepaid credit. They're going to send me a Visa card, a MasterCard, or whatever for the cost that I paid for the discs. Oh, They're wow. not even going to replace them. So that's how little they think of them. Don't buy the X series drives for your RAID build out. That's, so that's, that's my. That's they my are the ones that ended up with Hitachi, right? Um, no, Western no, Digital. No, that's H- HGST. Oh, is sorry, right, that was, yeah, Digital. that's HGST. So yep. it's not technically a Death Star, but it's damn close. Dude, HGST know. was the bomb for the last several years until they yes. got bought up by WD. It made and me then, very, very, very sad. Yes. Correct. Uh, I haven't had any trouble with those. The 310 terabytes uh, I have in there were fine. Um, I'm replacing them with a, a single... Uh, I got another 12 terabyte Seagate that I have on the way to serve as one of the parity discs and a couple of other 10 terabyte Western Digitals that I'm going to I'm going to shuck and put in there. Uh, but yeah, my, my everyone's Toshiba still shucking those drives. Hey, no, man, brilliant. those 10 terabyte brilliant. Easy the price, drives. Don't, the sweet spot pricing is right around 17 to 18 cents yep. um, per gig. Well, I'm not arguing. I'm yeah. just finding it funny that this is still a thing. It, it is. And uh, I I didn't put it in here because the sale was off. But yesterday, Newegg had a 24-hour sale, 10% off. Uh, I bought a couple, um, one, about 170-ish something, 171 uh, for uh, a 10 terabyte Western Digital, my nice. book, or, or, you know, one of the books anyways. So you and Alan bought them out, right? Yeah. Well, I, well if two cleaned them out, then yeah. Um, anyway, so I'm going to put those in there. But yeah, X300s, maybe not the hot ticket right now. Uh, the N series. That's too bad because I have a four terabyte X300 Toshiba as my game drive. Yep. And it's been super solid i got it for really inexpensive it's been great but yeah no they i don't know what they changed with the higher densities but yeah clearly something happened on these on potentially the higher density drives built around the end of 2018 beginning of 2019 they seemed real interested in the serial numbers i had two people that emailed me asking for serial numbers making sure i took pictures of them and uh, had them sent into a couple different places and you know, so I eagerly await my my uh, Visa gift cards six weeks from now. <laughs> oh, Thank so you very much. You back for them. You're not getting new drives. I am no. That's that's how little they think of them. I'm not even getting new discs out of it. They're like, yeah, we're going to refund you the dollars. We we won't even give well, that's you a bad drives. sign. I yeah. agree. I I have to agree. There's a lot of uh, heads in here, and that's why I felt like I had to come back. Didn't and say, Toshiba yeah, yeah, don't, buy, don't buy up uh, OCZ? <laughs> See, this is where that I get lost great. is who bought who bought I don't know who bought who, yeah. Yeah, I thought Toshiba bought up OCZ. I think you're right. And it wasn't even mm. for a penny on the dollar. Curses. Hey, uh, interesting uh, observation. I, I put in a link to these 12 terabyte hard drives that are still available at Newegg. And I thought like, hey, does, um, does Amazon still have a link? No. Oh, they took them down. The, the 12 Smart. terabyte Toshiba X300s, when I looked... We're not on Amazon. The other sizes, the 14s were, the 8s were, but the 12s were not there. Maybe they are now, but hmm. when I looked, they weren't there. You should have stuck with uh, Western Digital, Brett. Stop trying to be cute. Oh, now you tell me. Mm. Now you tell me. Shingles. Somebody's Somebody advised me. Bruce, out of the Discord, says, Bruce. hey, oh, you no. should have just sold them on eBay. Yeah. True. Yeah, because yeah. that wouldn't have come back to you within that first no. three days. No. I store all my bitcoins on this. Exactly. I'm gonna find you. I lost you. everything. <laughs> put up, put up my, put up my smart, my smart readout again, just as a reminder as to why I did not sell on eBay. Does anybody actually buy eBay hard drives? Because that's that just that just People sounds looking so for bad. Random bitcoins right. or personal information that didn't get deleted. Right. Other than that, I doubt it. Hey, for those who missed the first play, check out the fail column. <laughs> and that's yeah, why no. I did not sell it on eBay. And all three of them reported the same error. That's, that's, that's like buying used fan belts on <laughs> yeah. eBay. <It> just, <laughs> I'm surprised you went for fan belts, Josh. 
There were a lot of used things that she could have gone for. Fan belts was the, was probably the most innocuous. So. Okay, let me close this thing out. Uh, <laughs> in closing, uh, this was episode five ninety nine. Five ninety nine. Yes. You and, buy. And thank you, know what you that Johnny. Means. She... It means that next week is episode six hundred. Six zero zero. Might this we have something when, special planned when for Ryan you? comes back and gives away a car, right? A truck. So, I thought it was a Camaro. Well, no, Tesla still hasn't put out the trucks, have they? Oh, no, 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 no. It was, it was, it was the still working truck. on the glass on those trucks. Yeah. Apparently, it's not very strong. Uh, but yeah, was, who knows what we might come up with? I actually, I'm working on some choreography. Um, I've sent out uh, some sheet music to everybody so we can work on the all musical. I didn't know what that was for. It's, it's mm-hmm. next week, 600. It's a musical. We're doing it I mean, as an obviously opera. spam. I, mean, I don't even play an instrument, Josh. You just, your voice is the <laughs> yes, instrument. Yes, you do. Yeah, but you we're do. not going to talk about that. All right. Oh, okay. Much. Not that We're not talking about that kind of flute, Josh. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, until then, please tune in next week uh, to see what we come up with for 600. But until then, thank you for listening and watching and supporting us for whatever reason.